So what happens when a magnet falls through a coil? Here we have a magnet and a coil. It's wrapped around, let's say, a paper tube. And the magnet is falling down. So the magnetic field from the magnet below the magnet is coming in this direction here, out of the north. Of course, it's wrapping around and connecting back up into the south. So this is the loop of the magnetic field around the magnet. Now, Lenz's law tells us that in a coil, the, it will produce a magnetic field that opposes the change. So here, the magnetic field is increasing as it gets towards the coil. And so the coil will oppose that magnetic field change by producing its own magnetic field in the other direction. So let's understand why that is. And let's think to ourselves, in this case with a coil that's wrapped the way I've drawn it here, if we measured the voltage across that coil with a voltmeter, then which way would the current be flowing and what would the voltage be? And how would we graph that voltage as a function of time? So let's think about that using our right-hand rules of electromagnetism. So here we have the falling magnet. I think it's better to think of this, or it's worth thinking of this, in terms of the wire moving up towards the magnet, because we've got a right-hand rule for that scenario. So here's the right-hand rule for induced current from a magnetic field in a wire. So this is a right-hand rule where if the motion of the wire is the thumb, the magnetic field are the fingers that is uh, acting on the wire, then the current in that wire will be in the direction of the palm. So let's use that in this scenario here. So I'm going to draw that magnet and only draw the one wire at the uh, top of the coil. So let's just imagine that one loop of wire here. And let's think of exactly what's happening on that piece of wire. So from the magnet, there is a magnetic field that's coming down like this and around, as we've said, and on that particular part of the coil, then the magnetic field is acting at this angle here. This is the angle of the magnetic field. Now, in the direction of motion, there is a component which I'm going to call the parallel component of the magnetic field. And in the direction perpendicular to that, there is a component which I'm going to call B perpendicular. Okay, so from the magnetic field, from the magnet, if we have the magnet held stationary and we move the wire up towards the magnet, we think of it that way around, then this right-hand rule applies. And the direction of the uh, wire needs to be par uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field. So these two components, the the component in this direction, because the wire is moving in the direction of the magnetic field, that does not induce any current. But according to this right-hand rule here, if we have uh, a perpendicular magnetic field, perpendicular to the motion of the wire, then there will be a current. So in this case, the motion of the wire is up. The wire is moving upwards. And so that's the thumb. Uh, the fingers are pointing in the perpendicular component, which is uh, sideways out from the coil. Therefore, the current is in the direction of the palm of your right hand. So the current will be flowing this way around that wire. That's an induced current from the magnetic field that comes from the magnet when the wire is moving in the direction of the thumb. So it's moving up. So that's analogous to the wire being constant and being fixed and the magnet falling. So this is exactly the scenario. So when the magnet falls in here, we will have a current going in this direction round that wire, which means this direction round the coil. Now we can think, okay, we've got a current in the wire now, and that current will produce its own magnetic field. And now we can look at this right-hand rule, which is the induced magnetic field from a current. So now we've got the current in the wire, which produces its own magnetic field, according to this right-hand curl rule. So now we put our thumb in the direction of the current, which is this direction here towards the right, and we wrap our fingers around to find the direction of the magnetic field that comes from that current. And if you can imagine that for that wire, it's around behind the wire, up and around the wire. So inside the center of this coil, the magnetic field induced uh, from the current, is going up and then it loops around and comes down the outside. But this is the reason now you can see the current that's induced 
from the magnet from the magnet is going in this direction and then the magnetic field induced from that current is going in an upwards direction inside the coil and so therefore it is uh, opposing the magnetic field from the magnet so the magnet's magnetic field is coming down and the magnetic field in induced from this current is going up that's the induced magnetic field from the current so i'm going to call that b i magnetic field induced so this is the scenario when the magnet is falling into the coil of course we have the same uh, analogous situation when the magnet is coming out the bottom of the coil so when it comes out the bottom here let me draw this one here again i like to think of it as the magnet being stationary and the coil moving that makes this means you can use this rule here so now we've got the current uh, now we need to find out which way the current is going in this scenario. So this bottom loop, which is coming around like this now, uh, as the magnet is, if the magnet's stationary, now we're moving the wire up this way. That's analogous to it falling out the bottom of our coil. Is if the if the magnet is stays stationary and the coil moves up, then what we have is, and of course the field lines are coming like this, and we've got the perpendicular component now of the field line is. Uh, so this is the field line here. So now there's a perpendicular component in that direction. Of course, there's the parallel component here, and this is the perpendicular component. I'll draw that here, B perpendicular, is now going in. So now if we use this right-hand rule, the, the motion is going up still, uh, but the, um, the perpen uh, perpendicular component is going in. So that means the current is going now into the page on the left hand side and out of the page on the right hand side. So the current has actually reversed its direction when the magnet is falling out the bottom. Okay, so in this case now the magnet's reversed its direction but it's still opposing the change. So it still satisfies Lenz rules but we have found that here by using our right hand rule for uh, these two scenarios here, these two different right hand rules. And for an explanation of all four of the right hand rules, look in the link below this video where you'll find uh, the links to that uh, video about the four right hand rules of electromagnetism. So what we've found now is that as the magnet falls into the top of the coil, the uh, current will be induced around in this clockwise direction. As it falls out the bottom, the current is induced in the anti-clockwise direction. And so what that means is the voltage here, uh, as it falls in, the voltage, the current will be going this way. So this is a positive voltage. And as it falls in and more flux lines cro cross more coils, the voltage will increase. And then it gets to a point where it's in the middle of the coil and then the voltage will be decreasing because some of the effect will be this effect here from it being from the coils which are above, which are, this is where the coil is above. And that is uh, with a magnetic field, um, uh, induced magnetic field now pointing down because the current's coming around here and in down inside the coil according to this right hand rule. So for the coils that are above the magnetic field will be down. For the coils which are below the magnetic field will be up and the current will be cancelling each other out as the magnet falls down and then once the magnet gets uh, down towards the bottom here then the current will be reversed as we saw and the overall current will be reversed. And it's interesting to note that as the magnet falls through the coil it actually slows down and that's because this induced magnetic field which is in the opposite direction to the magnetic field from the magnet causes the coil to act like a magnet itself with a you can imagine it with a north pole and a south pole and so the Magnetic field at the top of the coil, coming out the top of the coil, opposes this magnetic field here and it gives us a magnetic repulsion effect. So the, the gravity pulling the magnet down is opposed by the magnetic repulsion and that causes the magnet to slow down as it goes through the coil. And then once it leaves the bottom of the coil, it's uh, only affected by gravity again. And it tends to spend more time slowing down than it does speeding up. So we get this shape here for the voltage as a function of time. 
So hopefully using these right hand rules gives you more insight into what happens when a magnet falls through a coil. More insight than simply saying that you apply Lenz law um, because that doesn't tell you about the direction of current and the voltage that's induced. But you do get that from fundamentally using the right hand rules of electromagnetism. So if this video has helped you, you can give it a thumbs up, um, tell your friends about it, um, check out the description below where you'll find a link to a web page which has a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel and of course subscribe to the channel for more videos.